Here comes the sun, do 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 do. Hello, I've got time today. I hope that you have too. And if I start raising my voice, that's because I'm going to try and drown out the traffic, the activities beyond the hedge, so that we can get a patio tour in. I hope that you have some time, that you have your beverage of choice ready. Let's have a look see at what is going on around here. P.S. The patio's a mess. It's so good to have you on the patio here in southern Spain on a sunny October day at the time of filming. It has been a little bit of a dismal, let's say, 10 days. <laughs> and I have been dragging my feet. I didn't want to go outside. I didn't want to do much. Meanwhile, also physically, I'm a little bit impeded. Let's put it this way. We'll see how long this can last, me on my feet. If I start breathing very, very heavily, I'm going to cut this video short because nobody wants to hear that. But what you see on the table, which I did manage to wipe before we did the tour, the rest of the patio is in shambles. Won't go into detail on that. It'll stay in shambles until I'm able to deal and cope with it. But on the table here, you see some orchids that were still left out because of the rain that have not been returned to their shelves after being flushed. Reasons? They can take the winter sun. Another reason is some have a fungus on them that I'm trying to burn away. <laughs> and others I am really keeping an eye on. I'm trying to treat for whatever pest is afflicting them. But there are a couple I want to get up close and show you because what is going on? <laughs> Maybe you can see right there. <laughs> Look at this growth of my Brassavola there. Yeah, we'll get up close. And well, my Osteocladus spathulifera had spider mites and is completely and utterly leafless. Yonder. <laughs> this is my Brassavola tuberculata. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea how this growth here suddenly decided to become a mega growth. Now, the reason I have it leaning over the Osteocladus spathulifera is, seeing as it is completely leafless, there are no spider mites on her anymore, so it's not like they're going to transmit to the tuberculata, is because I don't want anything to kink here at the joint until it completely hardens off. It is a monster of a growth, and I know that this is not mislabeled because I've had this orchid bloom before. Otherwise, I would think it was a flagellaris. <laughs> I have not increased the fertilizer level on this one. So all I'm assuming is that finally there are really good roots in the pot, which was an experiment back in the day because the pot is full of pumice. And Brassavola roots have their, let's say, characteristics that we either can get right or horribly, horribly wrong. As you can see with my rescue gyra Kiku here, not happy in Lekka at all. So it's been rescued over the past two years now just in Lava Rock. And this is how long it's taking to get it back up and running. But it has a Brassavola parent. So <laughs> yeah, Brassavola roots are a completely different animal to orchid roots. But if you want to find out what I've discovered about Brassavola roots, there is a video linked in the description about them because I have figured them out but that has nothing to do with how my tuberculata growth has grown. I just believe she's properly rooted in now. And well, I've got my work cut out to see what the season of 2024 is going to bring. <laughs> Over in the distance there, you can see my golden cellar that has Busarium, hopefully by now treated. The new growth is uh, okay, it's okay. But of course, scale is going to do a number on weak orchids. That's why she's on the table because keeping an eye on her just to make sure that when the new roots grow, everything is okay. She's been flushed by rain and yeah, keeping up the treatment so that the scale doesn't get out of hand or think it even stands a chance. My Lori Mortimer here on the right is out here also because it's being treated. My dendrobiums this year had afflictions of spider mites, I believe, and thrips in combination. So yeah, just keeping it here just to make sure that I can not forget because I am not too keen on this orchid. It was supposed to be a samurai. You know, when an orchid comes mislabeled, sometimes you say, yeah, I really like the bloom, but Lori Mortimer, mm, not really too fond of it. Still, while the orchid is fighting, I will too, but you can see growing points have been decimated 
I still have a growing point on this cane right here, but the thrips damage is evident. Of course, I'm still trying to burn out <laughs> the fungus there of my Panarica brassa volée, as well as my Patricia van Buyenbroek, trying to keep the fungus off of that one. And then I have my epidendrums right here. That came from a very dodgy order back in 2018. Yes, this is all I have to show for at the moment on these two epidendrums. But for the first time, with the exception of this one, because dang, these growing points are uber sensitive. But for the first time, I've got my pseudo epidendrum growing a nice growth. However, also we have thrips damage. Now, epidendrums can stand a lot of sun and that is why they are out there. So if you're a little bit alarmed about the red leaves, don't be alarmed. It's all very normal for epidendrums. My embryi also has red leaves. Even though it was a little bit more protected, the anthocyanin is strong in these. And down here, not a rescue, but this is my pocket lover and it's starting to form some buds. Last year it was afflicted with spider mites, so I kept it well protected in case this summer was going to be dry as well. Turns out this summer was super humid, no spider mites on her, but I think I won't get as nice a blooming on my pocket lover as I did last year. We've got one bud here. I can see other little tiny bumps and nodes starting to form. We'll have to wait and see what she does. At least she's free of spider mites, if she's not free of Baloo's curly hair. <laughs> it's been rather windy and Baloo sheds a lot. So his little curly hair is everywhere. And the same with my Brassavola Cordata, at least this one. Yeah, it's on a rescue mission here because Lekka, not liking Lekka at all because of the evaporative cooling. But Lava Rock is starting to do the trick. So we are on the road to recovery. Those roots are going to love their winter this time around. So that is the table. I'm going to swing you around and just gush a little bit about my Stan the Man. Absolute insanity. But first, check out my Jill of Diamonds to the left. That beautiful apricot peach color of the blooms as they fade. Yep, they were chewed and munched. I could have cut the spike off, but I do like that little pop of color back there. Anywho, Stan the Man, what is going on? Let me tell you, at the moment, and for the past two months probably, I've been fertilizing at 800 parts per million. <laughs> I'm like, if you're going to go beast mode, I'm right with you. 800 parts per million, sometimes two times a day because of how much he's drinking at the moment. Let me give you the count du jour. 24 new growths at the moment. Yep, 24. 22 of them are very, very well on their way, also starting to leaf out. And in the past week, I saw number 23. And then yesterday, I saw number 20. So there is a marginal difference to Stan the Man from two months ago to what we see now. Absolutely digging this orchid. I cannot tell you how much fun it is to stand on the chair and chuck the water into that basket like there is no tomorrow. I'm still pending one more 800 parts per million dose today and I'm already looking forward to it. 24 can you believe it insane but oh it's so nice to have some orchids that just you know they just grow like that oh love it. can't wait for the 2024 bloom spectacle by the way by the way if you don't mind just to give this video a like that would be amazing it truly helps out with the algorithm and also if you have not subscribed to the channel oh i would appreciate you joining ninja orchids here on the patio on a regular basis so please subscribe i can assure you you don't want to miss 2024 <laughs> with stan the man 2024 24 new growths i guess there is method to his madness and i love it I am as far away as I can go so that you can see the top, top shelf. Let's say the penthouse of the east side patio shelf, <laughs> which unfortunately in about two or three weeks is going to move to the west side. But that's why this tour has to happen today. I was expecting clouds. When the sun came out, I was like, just got to hit record. Let's go. Anyway. The penthouse of my east shelf has all my Ancelia Africanas and they are still pushing out new growths even at this later stage. I have a feeling my OG, that one over there, 
My OG Ancelia that I've had since 2018 is going to bloom for us sometime. Not sure when the spikes are going to progress because it would be a first time bloomer, but something looks a little different on one or two of the mature growths, wouldn't it? That'd be exciting. That would be a first time bloomer after it arrived with spiddly little canes and I thought for months it's never gonna make it. But here we are, almost five years later. <laughs> Maybe five and a half years by the time it blooms. The other ones are doing great. I have to make sure that I keep treating with garlic alcohol because there have been some pests in there that I'm not entirely happy with. They've been evicted, but you know, the marks remain, but the growths are coming along beautifully. And behind my Jill of Diamonds, which is actually Jack of Diamonds, but you know, female blooms, I just have a little bit of fun with it. I call him Jill in the meantime. <laughs> I know, weird. Anyway, the After Dark Black Pearl is right behind it. That has got two spikes coming. So forgive me for not taking all that down. We'll have a closer look when they come inside. And uh, yeah, I hope that video doesn't come out for a long, long time because it's not exactly something I relish. Moving down to the loft of the East Shelf, the loft real estate, all the cat leaves that are there, they are in full sun, but they weren't 30 minutes ago. So this sun influence right now is not going to hurt them at all. There's a couple of things I just want to mention here. My cat Leah Dinar Blue Heaven did not bloom for us this year. She had a major repot, so... Yeah, I guess she objected to that, unfortunately. But hopefully in 2024, she'll have forgiven me for doing that. I just want the orchid to be happy. It needed to be done. I did not think that she would object to that root ball cleanup, but here we are. Anywho, then my Coilostylus ciliaris did not bloom for us this year, unfortunately. But her party trick of 2023 was three new growths. <laughs> hey, bring it on. That is absolutely fine. But she is not alone with just growing growths. None of my Coilo stylus bloomed for us this year, but they have put on growth. Wow, we. It's like the oh, surprise face. What are you doing? Anyway, wonderful root systems developing. <laughs> Me gusta. And another one that didn't bloom for us either was the Lelia Pacavia. Quel dommage. However, bring on new growth at a time of year where I can fertilize heavily and don't have to tiptoe around the issue. Very, very pleased. And then if we go down to the ground, well, not quite ground level, we'll get there. But let me scoot you down, going down, down, down. Here goes the elevator all the way down. And can we do a little bit of a tilt without making you ill? I have down here, yeah, we'll call this ground floor because the basement is down there. Anyway, <laughs> we have Marinculalia digbiana to the left there. I am very happy that the growths that are starting already are starting way premature for what she normally does in my collection. So at least now she's getting a good blast of sun, which she wouldn't get during the winter. I have never had her start growth so soon. <laughs> I am not complaining. Very happy about that. The rescue catlias and lava rock, we'll look at those when we go and bring the orchids inside. Very pleased to see that my pastoral innocence has still got a nice big sheath on it. And then you can see a little gaggle of slipper orchids over there, which I normally don't have there. But because of the way the rain was coming in with the wind, they had to get moved away from where they were located underneath the rapiculus lalias because, well, we'll get there, I hope. So far, I can still breathe, which makes a big difference to my energy levels as well. Let's go to the basement. We've got all the orchid tops lined up. Everybody has survived the winter, including my Leonis, which is looking dodgy with another leaf dying back. I lost a lot of leaves of my Leonis at the beginning of the season, and I was about to call it a day. Still with us, we'll see how Leonis copes through the winter. It's losing that other leaf, but at least it's losing it from the tip inwards, as opposed to what the other leaves were doing, just falling off while they were still green. So I've got the Caloptera, I've got the Pretermisa, the Monachica, and there is Alexandra. They're all doing great. Even though the Monachica didn't bloom for us, the Coloptera is still a little bit too young to bloom for us. The Pretermisa probably as well. Had a big struggle with that one, but she's still with us. And you can see all the foliage around that. We may have to do some weeding and then we'll have a closer look at them. I'm going to scoot you over to the right so that you can see the Dendrobium nobilis. You see, this is the amount of light that they like. 
my pocket lover that I showed earlier did not get this amount of light at all, seeing spider mites, blah, blah, blah. Well, my nobly no ID had also got some thrips issues, which have been dealt with, but the one from Fernanda Nathimento orchids and succulents, the Cooksonianum, ha! <laughs> Three new growths have matured, and I managed, I managed to get them as tall, if not a smidge taller, than the ones that she came with. I'm looking forward to some blooms on the Cooksonianum because, yes, we had blooms earlier in the season, however, I did have something munch on the buds, and that cut my blooming in half this season, so I'm gonna keep a real eye out on the fact that <laughs> that shouldn't happen again. It would have been a much nicer blooming if something didn't come along and consider it a nice lunch or dinner or whatever. Anywho, these are they. Fast forward 2024, spring can't come soon enough in my opinion. My bowl of Platea striata and Albo striata. Yes, there's two different orchids in here. Like I said, it's a mess. I haven't even taken out the old leaves, but they're dying back and they have been dying back for the past three months. So I'm already looking for new growth <laughs> a little prematurely. Full transparency, you can see how messy that little tray is where I had the nobilies during the summer. As far as I'm concerned, all of that can wait. <laughs> my little ecosystem happening down there. And then here on the right is my Fios Tancanvillier. You can see I haven't cleaned out the leaves either, <laughs> just to tidy the orchid up. When in Spain, it is always nice every once in a while to embrace the word manana. And then to the left is my Cymbidium. I've already got two spikes growing on her. I lost a growth early in the season. That was really weird. I guess I got water into a Cymbidium spike in the middle of summer, high humidity. Just poured water into the pot and yeah, talk about my surprise on losing a growth. Well, lesson learned. I guess I shall be more careful next year. Here is a gaggle of orchids, uh, the only orchid that I have to bring inside every once in a while at night now, not every night, is my Balonopsis pulchra. You can see that she's lying down. The direction of the light is coming from here. The white facade is the main source of light. And she hasn't flinched because I took her keiki off. This is how she will be during the winter. She'll be lying down. I can't hang her up. The mount is too heavy. And I just water the hob filter material. Everything starts to saturate and then nothing should go into the crown, which grew in and up on itself while on the mount. So you see, even hanging a Phalaenopsis upside down, they will curl up towards the light. So this idea about how Phalaenopsis grow out in nature upside down for the water to pool away from the crown, not quite true if they're reaching for the light and their tree canopy forces them to grow back upright. A little nugget of intel for a video that I'm going to do about this, if you want to call it phenomenon. My cutie patootie Crisnetia green light is in bloom. I already took off two blooms today. Hibiki, superstar, still in bloom. And then I have <laughs> my weirdo, Neostylus Lucneri in bloom, is already getting two spikes. A video about that will come as well. Like I said, subscribe. Lots and lots of things coming in the future. My Darwinara Blue Heaven is in spike, had two spikes, lost one. And my Neophoenicia Falcata right in the back there is starting very slowly. I can see the leaves going dull, is starting to go into its resting mode. I've got my Dendrobium Cakeys over here, the Berry Oda because they need to be shipped, which I couldn't do in the past 10 days. So, you know, this little gaggle here is like a visual reminder because the memory fails me more often than not lately. Going down a little bit lower, including, let's say, things that I'm not too keen about, but the Maxillaria tenuifolia down here, love, love, love what it looks like. Normally I have it on the patio table to get exposed to as much sun as possible, but I was kind of fed up with seeing pale green leaves. I wanted something lush. Well, leave her in the shade and I've got my lush leaves. That may affect the blooming for 2024, but I just for once needed to see some gorgeous leaves on this orchid. Probably by the time it gets even colder, she will be the centerpiece on the patio table again. My big monster Kautskiana here from Anonymous is growing another new growth, which is amazing. Roy Tokunaga has been losing quite a few leaves. Ha! 
Not sure what I'm going to do with this orchid. There's a lot of deficiency on her. I do believe we had root issues throughout the summer. I did not address it because I believe leave an orchid in a pot while it's stressed out. And the roots of a Roy Tokunaga, I mean, they are like glass. So if the orchid already has root issues in the pot, I just thought I'm going to make it worse by unpotting her. And I just kept fertilizing and pretending there were no issues. But of course, being a dendrobium, being the year 2023, I also had to do a lot of thrips treatment on her. So probably a bit set back. But she is down there just to make sure that I keep an eye on her and monitor any kind of pest activity and deal with it straight away. She can't be in direct sun for that reason. This is like my visual diary down here. That includes Leopoldii there. If you've been with my channel from the beginning, you will know that me and Leopoldii, huh, I love them. They hate me. Or maybe they hate the setup, but I am being stubborn with the Leopoldii because I've seen progress. This is my 2.0. The first one succumbed to Fusarium. Anywho, Leopoldii, bifoliate, what's not to love? <clears throat> Scales seem to also be very partial to bifoliates. <laughs> they love them as well, so there we go. But having said that, right next to it is my white bridal and not a smidge of scale on her. She grew two more new growths after she bloomed for us for the first time this season as well. So that pot is nice and full. A project I didn't get around to because it is intimidating <laughs> is my Encyclia Garciana Alba. That thing, that beast is crawling out of the pot. The new growths are not reaching the media fast enough, so they're coming out all curly-whirly. But she's in bloom, a little prematurely, but hey. So yeah, I actually need to address that orchid. I just don't want to. <laughs> I just, oh, it's one of those things where you're like going, that thing has to be taken apart, given a fresh start, and it's just going to be a nightmare of a project because I'm going to lose a lot of the orchid just simply because the new growths won't have roots. I don't know how the old growths will be rooted in, and some of the growths I wouldn't even be able to pot up again, and it, I just hate seeing greenery go to waste. So, yeah, 2024 is probably the year where I'm not going to be able to make any excuses because it's got to be done. It can't continue like this. This orchid grew about 150 new growths in 2023. Uh, <clears throat> it would be nice just to have 20 that grow nicely. So yeah, that one's on me. Dendrobium aphyllum. We've got the curtain mount on the top getting watered and everything is going beautifully up there. Goes without saying that I'm looking forward to 2024 to see how all the cakeys start their new growth. Not just the class of 2023, but the class of 2020, 2020, well, all of them. <laughs> and then the mother plant here, very pleased with the progress of the plant. I've got longer canes from areas of the plant that weren't as long in 2022. The longest cane I got for 2023 is the one on the right, even though it's been capped because I took part of the cane off when I harvested the keiki. That was the longest cane, but now I can see a very long one right yep, down there. And then there's two that aren't too shabby here to the left. So this orchid is finally all by her lonesome on that mount. And I don't have to worry about this orchid drowning out two other orchids that were sawed off at the beginning of the season. And it appears that they handled the situation very, very well. So a film, again, fast forward, please. <laughs> Spring 2024, make it go quickly because I I'm already apprehensive about the coming months. It doesn't look like much. <laughs> Trust there will be even less. So right now I still have four baskets of Tolumnias left. I lost the fight to scale in a two year period after trying to rescue everything where I dropped the ball and scale got into the crevices. And then of course the garlic alcohol and me and the cold temperatures in the winter. Yeah, my Tolumnias are not looking too hip. I was very hopeful when it came to, I don't know what it's called, but I like it. That is the name that Michael McCarthy gave the Tolumnia right here. It's got two spikes coming. I was very hopeful that this one is going to make it because the growth were really, really substantial. But of course, there was scale in one of the tiny growths and you can see the yellowing leaves at the base. So we're probably going to lose that growth. I'm going to let her bloom out 
I should cut the spikes, but I'm going to let this one bloom out. It could be the last time that we see the blooms. I'm kind of tired of babying tolumnias over, tidying them over, knowing that the winter is very stressful. And then we have brown spots, which was also looking super promising and quite frankly still is. It's just that the anthocyanin level is so high because of the reflecting facade right now. The sun being lower in the sky, it hits the white facade and boom, they get blasted with light. So this is bright shade, but you see on the side that didn't get the light, it's nice and green. <laughs> anyway, brown spots is also growing two spikes and I'm going to let her bloom out. What I won't let happen is let the spikes branch and go on and on and on. And then here we have pink brished. I've, as far as I'm concerned, that is history. I'm, I'm done. I can't see anything moving forward. And then here we have the flyer pink beige. Now, this one is growing another new growth. I'm going to see if it does anything. However, when the bracts at the base are already toughening up before even roots have a chance to come out, that to me is a sign the orchid is also history. But I'm going to keep her over the winter. So we're going into the winter with these three baskets and then two more tolumnias that are indoors that are doing quite all right. And I believe that takes me from what I had at the beginning of the season. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure, but I believe I had eight and we'll bring three orchids inside. <clears throat> that is not a good ratio, but let me just say one thing. I tried. I did not leave these orchids out of my sight. This was the location during the summer. They normally live elsewhere to shine. This summer, I was adamant about staying on top of the scale. I stayed on top of the scale, but <laughs> once you get a weak orchid, once the stomata can't do their job anymore, sayonara tolumnia. Que lastima. It is one of those days where another little flush of just RO water is <laughs> called for. This is Dendrobium exili doing fabulously. This little piece of madness here is my Dendrobium seraula. Was radically sawn off the mount with my Dendrobium aphyllum that we saw earlier. Was afflicted by thrips, but <laughs> victory, victory. Look at them all branching out. Even the growths that had to be treated with garlic alcohol that were burnt because they're so delicate. Look at them grow. She's coming back. <laughs> I feel good. I knew that I would, yeah. And then there's one growth at the base here, which is important because, of course, I would like roots to go into that mount and start a new root system. She lost about 60%, maybe 70% of her root system when I sawed her off the Ophilum mount, but isn't that awesome? And then Monsieur Polyanthem to the left, up to the left. Deciduous, so whatever happens, I don't really mind, except that this one was not that bothered with any kind of spider mites, even though it lived next to the Bensoniana, which I will show you. Next, this one was not afflicted. I had to remove some moss off the top here just because I don't want the bases to be taken over during the winter months. So that's why some roots are exposed, whether they live or die. Not entirely fussed about it because this orchid has just gone bonkers with new growths. <laughs> There's plenty of roots that I can't see growing well. Very much looking forward to seeing those blooms again. And then here is my Bensonier. Wowee. Loving the new cork mount, enjoying every minute of it. And I suppose organic mount probably was the attraction as well to spider mites. This orchid has never had spider mites before, but I believe we had spider mites and a combo of thrips here. They are under control now. Uh, the damage is done. Deciduous, don't care. We have gorgeous new canes. At least all the growing points made it. They weren't compromised. So we have the nice length of canes as we should. Perfect. I think I've got about, I don't know what I counted, eight new growths on her. <laughs> it's going to be glorious. Here we have my last twinkle. This was the final hurrah rescue attempt. Put her on a mount, even though I don't want twinkles mounted. But I was losing, well, I lost all my other twinkles to Lekka and self-watering. So <laughs> this is the remnant of what I was trying to make it happen. If you see anything that is shredded or nasty looking as the curtains are blowing, 
let me tell you, it was extremely stormy. And once again, my patio is a mess. Just in case you skipped forward and didn't hear the opening. I am physically at the moment not able to address everything that I should be addressing here on the patio. Anyway, Twinkle is rescued. She's got a spike. Can you believe it? I am waiting just for the buds to separate and I'm cutting that spike off. Maybe, because the roots have gone mad on the mount, I could maybe let her bloom so that we can take some pictures and then do a video how I rescued my twinkle. <laughs> ah, not because of lack of self-watering success. That much is true. Anyway, a spike, be it a stress spike or a proper spike. Don't know, doesn't matter. We've got roots on the mount. And then here's the Brassavola, what I have labeled as Perinii. Won't be 100% sure until she blooms. This is my zombie rhizome from 2020. Look at this one. I was actually hoping that this growth here would give us a spike, but <clears throat> that's probably asking too much. She's already rocking two more new growths, which probably won't develop the way I would like them to. However, every new growth produces new roots and I'll take those. And then my beautiful Padangus Dactyloteras row over here, rocking the mount, loving the mount. I'm loving seeing the results since it's been on the mount. I'm just a little bit concerned about how to deal with this during the winter. Anyway, it's probably had enough sun by now. Shouldn't be so bold as to think all orchids can handle because it's quite warm. I wouldn't be misting this time of day if it weren't warm. Check this out. We've got branching, at least I hope that's focusing. The roots attaching to the mount. Please do me justice here. I think it's awesome. It worked out beautifully. Just four months, just four months to go. Whoop, there we go. And this little branch is attaching. I wanted this root to go into the crevice here and I was trying to tease it in there, but I didn't want to snap it. Uh, the branch got the hint. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put her into the shade, into the blooming alley. So as not to scorch her. My Rapiculus Lelia station here is a little bit scattered because now the pots are out of the sleeves. When it rains, at least the semi-hydro setup, it'll drain and then on the bottom here, of course, I had to position certain orchids depending on new growths that are happening at a lower level. So of course it looks a little bit haphazard and messy, but I did want to point out a few because they were gifted to me. Here is Angareri from Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones. We haven't seen this one in a long time. It settled in nicely. I know, one new growth. Well, that's all we need. It settled in beautifully. And now we can just rapiculous and roll. So that's Angareri, Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones. Just letting you know that your vote of confidence in gifting me these orchids as replacements. Oh, so appreciated. Not a gift from you guys, but I wanted to show you my little pathetic kind of Lelia Millery. See the thrips damage that it did last year. I was very concerned but all the new growths that came since then are clean. And then this is the growth of 2023 as well. Fantastic, it has rooted in. So I'm very excited because I got a pathetic little thing. The thrips was my fault, but the plant itself, when it arrived, I was like, oh my goodness, here we go again. Anyway, the orchid is clean. We have a gorgeous new growth. And I sincerely hope all of that was in focus because I was also trying to talk over a truck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here is the Lelia Millery crossed with long geeps. That was meant to be the replacement for the Millery that was in dismal and dire straits when it arrived. This one came from Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones, just so that I would have something Millery in my Rapiculus Lelia collection. She is really, really struggling to come out of the gates. I'm really watching this new growth right here for the root system. I know it all looks a little bit dry right now, but we've got very high dew point at the moment, so I don't want to water her in anytime soon. I got her a little bit protected from the rain so that I could control the water. I didn't want any water near that growth because early in the season, while she was still in the blooming alley, you see this new growth right here? It won't make it because the bract has already hardened off. So we're still teetering a little bit. The structures are, yeah, shriveling. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed. We need those roots. 
Standout orchids on this little area here is my Jomelia arborescens. Her fertilizer levels have increased this past year and <laughs> she's showing the results. Absolutely loving this one. Love how the structures have increased exponentially. And then I wanted to also show you my Papstii, which was always a bit of a touch and go Rapiculus Lelia as well. It came a little bit shabby. And we got two little growths growing back in 2021, I believe, 2022. And I thought, well, they're not to standard, but <laughs> they've got roots in the pot now. And then the next two growths from that now are starting to look normal. And she grew a third new growth. So Papstii is rooted in. And if you are a Rapiculus Lelia aficionado or would like to try them and you've heard how they need to be you know, in small pots, etc. Well, they also don't like their root system disturbed. So I like to put them in bigger pots and then just wait until they root in and mature and outgrow their pots. So it's like, do I disturb them every two years to repot them or do I just make sure that I keep the roots alive, get the orchid to grow? I am choosing the latter of those two options because for me, roots are important. The rest will come eventually. Anyway, this one was repotted. We're teetering a little bit on the brink with this one where we cut the rhizome to get the dyed out pseudobulbs out. The next one is dying off. This piece, oh, come on, I need some roots. But Diana is doing pretty well. She didn't bloom for us this year. She's losing a leaf here, but that's the one in the back. What I've managed to do is circle her back into the pot. Sorry about the banging if I can't edit that out. Anyway, so the rhizome was going all the way this way, and then with light training, here we are. She's circling back around. <laughs> I love it. That worked a treat. Anyway, she's given us two growths this year at least. I've got these two that have matured, and the third one is on the way. Like I said, if you don't bloom for me, at least keep growing, and that's exactly what she's doing. Bring on the root system. Recently, we have had a look at my Myrmecophila Thompsoniana. Here is cousin It, and can you believe it? What are you doing, Monsieur? Monsieur, or have you already finished that bloom? Well, there is another bloom tucked away in here. That's probably not something you can see, but he has another bloom tucked in amongst this foliage. <laughs> okay. Well, sir, I'd like you just to hold off a little bit with your blooming. I need you to be beautiful in January because that is sort of my mental all-time low and I need to see all the sparkly little yellow blooms from Cousin It specifically in January. But to see blooms this early in the season, good grief. Stick around, there's a video coming about, hello, something along those lines in the collection. So, Hoxiana, the Tolumnia, she is doing great. Just live in La Vida for the time being while she can outside. Plenty of tiny little new growths coming. Just make sure that they don't grow into the hob filter material, new roots. I am enjoying the visual of that. My Victoria Regina, oh my goodness. We've got all the growths coming, all the growths exploding. This is her time of year to shine. Now she's waking up because the temperatures are absolutely to her liking. I've got one new growth that started at the base of the orchid, which is always encouraging because then, hello, new roots also start to go back into the mount. And now I have another second new growth down here with new roots. I need to put her on a fresh bit of cork, but it's not gonna be a remounting where I take the orchid off this mount, no. I still have as yet to create a little like infrastructure, shave off a little bit of a cork mount, and then all I'm gonna do is wire this orchid to the next mount. It's gonna be cumbersome, it's gonna look heavy, a little bit clumsy, but it's gonna work. And it's going to protect my Victoria Regina from me doing any damage and setting this orchid back, because at the moment she looks wonderful and she is pest free, because yes, I did struggle with some issues during the summer months. Dendrobium serratilabium, this is the second blooming that I missed I didn't document it properly. She did bloom for us and I let her bloom out because she is growing new roots on her mount. She came out like a rock star after also being sawed off the aphyla mount. This is her new growth of the season. I am so, so happy and proud of this orchid that she has done so well. And like I said, we've had one flush of blooms that I documented. The second flush, I didn't. 
these blooms do not last very long. But Madam is going for round three. We've got buds everywhere. Again. So never mind sawing off a Dendrobium serratilabium off of a mount in some kind of radical ninja way. It'll be fine. Bring along a little bit of the root system and it's going to get angry and say, hold my beer, watch this space. And I'm loving it. This one, <laughs> Dendrobium unicum. Oh my goodness, since I saw Michelle Fucarino's unicum, I'm like going, oh, gold, gold. But of course, there's two different Dendrobium unicums. There's the smaller one and then there's the larger variety. I was always under the impression I've got the smaller variety. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I just have a very immature Dendrobium unicum because look at this growth of the season. Yes, I have upped the fertilizer on this one as well. Seeing as I had very high humidity, I didn't have to worry about burning roots when the warm winds, dry winds of 12% humidity were blowing. So I could be generous with my fertilizer. And this cane is looking marvelous. And at least I hope you can see the cane because I see diddly squat. Isn't it awesome? So pleased with that one. Did well. Even though I did accidentally chop off some roots that were viable. Oh well, the recovery. <laughs> Not complaining. Kimmy here. <laughs> My non-bloomer. Oh, I need to fill up the sprayer. Anyway, Kimmy here is my non-blooming orchid that is growing like a weed and I'm loving it. She can stay, blooms or not. The root system this year, oh my goodness, what a little bit of humidity can do to an orchid. What a blessing, thoroughly enjoyed and the branching is insane. Yes, I was using a new product called Bactafil, which is there to encourage branching, encourage root systems, etc. But I do believe that the humidity also had a huge part to make that happen. And to give some orchids that are normally in the blooming alley some exposure to rain, I've got my Ampuethea Pink Dreamer here. Gorgeous root system. Won't go in the pot. She's still alive and she has grown beautifully this year as well loving the spacing throughout her structures as she grows up and becomes even bigger. Who'd have thunk? And then here's my Renantha Citrina. We didn't get any blooms from her this year. Hakuna Matata, she's alive. At this point in time, I'm just glad my orchids are alive. That includes my Chilariana that has Fusarium still there rocking the Kasbah. Uh, I can't see any new roots coming out of her, but in order for her to do that, she's got to try and grow some new growths before new roots start. But the old roots still green up. I think the velamen is shot to bits. I don't think it's functioning properly, but hey, look, we still got green. I've lost two leaves since we put her into lava rock. And Porfine, my Tibicinis here, has grown two new growths. One here and one in the back. <laughs> I waited all season during the hot time of year for this orchid to start new growth and it was just like nah not having it and in the last four weeks it was like okay here I grow I'm like well welcome por fin <laughs> and then something beautiful is happening in the corner of the deep south my gold coast is coming into gorgeous bloom wonderful stuff and I'm going to let her bloom because no other pseudobulbs are shriveling, even though Ciliano attacked the pseudobulbs. And not only that, the second new growth of the season as well, that sheath, it's bursting open. There will be two leads blooming on my Gold Coast for the first time. I would really like to keep the leaves nice and clean throughout the winter months, but she hates cold temperatures. So we're probably only going to be able to enjoy pristine leaves <laughs> for a short amount of time until they get all blotchy and nasty because cell structure doesn't like my cold temps. And what is also going to be amazing is that my bossery to the left and my crestwood to the right both have Two spikes each. Drum roll. Uh, that'll be a first for two years that these two will have two spikes. I didn't manage it the last two seasons. <laughs> if I don't make a mistake and if the trek back indoors is all going to go according to plan, we are going to be blessed with something absolutely magical during a time of year that isn't, for me, magical at all. I also want to show you the Vanda that I finally potted up out of a plastic tub. <laughs> Look at her grow. 
We did no damage to the root system at all. All we did was move her from a plastic container with a semi-hydro setup to a nice snazzy white pot with a semi-hydro setup. But there's never a guarantee that a Vanda that grows roots like, let's say, snooze mode, slower than a snail mode, that kind of thing, that the roots then would not appreciate being disturbed. But she has got another curvature now going as she is starting to correct her direction of growth, seeing as in the plastic container she was just leaned against the container. I didn't support her. So her growth was coming towards us because we are the light. And now her crown and growing point is correcting itself. It is a wonderful sign that everything is just perfect in the pot. And of course, I can't stop gushing about my Epidendrum Stamfordianum. This growth, oh, there are roots coming out of the bottom of the pot. Yay! <laughs> the new growth has surpassed all the other previous growths. And I believe this orchid will be considered rescued in 2024. We have to survive the coming winter. But oh my goodness, I am hopeful, so excited. If I still could, I would demonstrate cartwheels around the patio, but I'll use emojis for that. And then this funky little vanda down here with its only little bio ecosystem of water. <laughs> it looks to be growing pretty well. If I take the orchid out of the pot, I have some dead roots there, but a lot of them are branching and they are touching the edge of the container. So I don't want to be jostling her around and showing you roots. I'm sorry, you're just gonna have to go with me on this one. If, if the roots die, I will tell you they died. But right now, um, yeah, <laughs> she has also got more root nubbins at the base. This is insane. This Vanda has been languishing. Her name is Greenhopper, not really, but hey, some nurseries always think that they have to make up names instead of just putting no ID. There is no shame. Hello, orchid nurseries out there. If you don't know the name of your orchid, don't invent them. That's just silly. Just put no ID and put the color of the blooms. People will like it anyway. So there you go. Still alive, looking lush and not as spotty as it once was. Very happy to show you a Vanda. I would say it's a Vanda Falcata hybrid. It's also a fantastical name. I'll just say it. It's rainbow, but it's a no ID from the same nursery who couldn't just accept they have a no ID. Anyway, very excited to show you new fans coming along naked stems. That is important. I have several of them. They're very difficult to see at the moment, but you know, there's another one <laughs> behind. Let's go. Yep, 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 there. There's another one right there and another one right down in here. If you can see that in the shade right there. I like to see that this one is kind of starting to fill out again with new fans. I really hope that they will grow and mature because it's looking a little bit spiddly <clears throat> on this side. You can tell it's a little bit. Yeah, we need some filling out to happen here. Be nice. If this stem got going, so maybe I should give it some back to fill before the next rain comes. But yeah, I'm very excited. That is promising. Let's fill this orchid up a little bit. She was looking un petit naked. <laughs> and then we have the basket case that is my weirdo of Neo Stylus Loose Neary Blue. Also starting to develop its funky little spikes, but doing well. I'm just touching the leaves because, ha! Huh, the sun is just glorious, absolutely glorious. And here's my classic Neo Stylus Lucneri, also making sure it doesn't burn. I've done so well throughout the summer to protect these orchids from too much light, as in burning their leaves. They've grown really well. Now I don't want them to get spoiled just because I am dropping the ball. So I am going to show you one more thing and um, behold, while I take these and put them in the blooming alley, just to be on the safe side. Did I just see a butterfly? Did I disturb a butterfly? You are as high as I can get my tripod. There's a butterfly on the top of that one Vanda spike on the bloom. I hope you can see that. There better be a butterfly because I'm not into moths. Moths larvae do damage on my orchids. Me thinks this is a little butterfly, a flutter by, a little gracing of her presence on a beautiful Vanda Chalpraya bloom. If you would open your wings, we could all admire you too. But isn't this just awesome? Three spikes on my Vanda Chalpraya. Tcha! I haven't got the fragrance yet, but this is a first time. Oh, bye. Bye, butterfly. This is a first time I have three spikes. Granted, there's one growth here and the main stem up there. But 
the fact that we are in fall, woo, I'll take it. My little harbingers of summer. It was so nice to see you achieve this. Beautiful. Normally she smells of blueberry candy. Ah, love it. The color's a little bit richer in real life than the camera's picking up, but you know what? Bring on the sun, just stay. I'll put up a picture with her true colors while we enjoy what we see in the sunlight. So pretty, so pretty, so pretty. Isn't he pretty? Oh, here is my Papio Pedalum Spicerianum back in bloom. But if everything goes well and I make no mistakes, we are gonna have Spicerianum in bloom for the first time with two blooms because if you haven't noticed, there's a bud down here and they are pretty long lasting blooms, which means that would be a first on the patio skews the dusty leaves but this one normally lives right underneath the rapiculus lalia in a covered little area so that no rain gets on the blooms and no accidents from yours truly would happen either so i don't touch her until they've bloomed out eating tea party he looks a little bit more orangey on screen than he really is he's more a chartreuse green with like a bronzy brown on the pouch it's not that orange it's more green and brown, which is a combination I absolutely love. And he's got that cheeky face. <laughs> anyway, I have taken up a lot of your time. That is, if you've stayed and watched the video to the end, for which I want to thank you so, so much. If you needed a second cup of your preferred beverage, then I hope that it was worth it and that you enjoyed this look around despite a very messy patio. Thank you for your understanding, for not having everything up to standard. I tried to hide the worst bits because if you saw what you saw and I thought, well, that doesn't look too bad. I'm like, yeah, well, the camera isn't focusing on certain things that mm, I'm not sure even my condition could explain away. <laughs> Having said all that, thank you so, so much for your support on the channel here. Thank you for all your comments. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing. I look forward to seeing you in the next one that you choose to watch. In the meantime, though, have yourself a wonderful day. I attach a condition to that that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.